Hello, I'm going to talk about applying ontologies to behavioural science and I'm going to do this with reference to a particular project, the Human Behaviour Change Project. Changing human behaviour lies at the heart of pretty well everything. Uh, so the causes and solutions of global problems, for example, environmental degradation and climate change, ill health, disability and avoidable deaths, pandemic viruses, etc, etc. And to solve these problems, policymakers, politicians, practitioners need answers to the following question, or at least variants of this question. When it comes to behaviour change interventions, what works compared with what, for what behaviours, how well and for how long, with whom, in what setting and why, i.e. how does the change take place? So where are we with interventions to change behaviour? Social and behavioural sciences have produced a rich source of theories and methods for intervention design and evaluation. And there's been considerable investment in interventions aimed at individuals, communities and populations. I should add a tiny percentage of that spent on biomedicine, which I think should be rebalanced urgently. Um, and the current estimate is that we have hundreds of trials of behaviour change interventions published every day. Unfortunately, most have modest and also very, very variable effects and variability that we don't fully understand. Um, any big databases uh, will demonstrate this. We're limited um, in the advance of behavioural science, that is understanding human behaviour and how to change it. And we're also limited in the application of behavioural science to solve real world problems. And why is it we haven't made faster progress? Um, for interventions, uh, describing them, reporting them, we have vague and or inconsistent reporting. Labels and definitions may be unclear, with the different terms often used for the same things or the same terms for different things. And when it comes to our theories and models, we have the same problem. And in addition, we have a plethora of overlapping theories and models. And all of this leads to slow accumulation of knowledge. So part of the solution is better reporting of all aspects of interventions, including their mechanisms of action and their contexts. And also secondly, to improve our methods to organise and synthesise large amounts of complex evidence at scale and rapidly using automation and be able to make inferences from that evidence to generate new understanding. Now, why is this so important? I mentioned the absolutely vast and accelerating um, rate at which evidence is being published. The interventions to change behaviour are usually highly complex with many interacting components. And we need to be able to look at the whole of the world literature, not just small amounts of it. And to do this, we need to uh, use automation. In addition, it needs to be absolutely up to date. If we're looking at systematic reviews that were published a couple of years ago, those studies may have been done many years ago and the world's moved on. The context is very different. And the reason for the importance of making inferences here is that those parts of the world which is most in need of um, evidence-based support uh, because they're low and middle income countries with high levels of death, disease, disability, environmental degradation, etc., are those parts of the world where there's least evidence. The overwhelming majority of evidence uh, still comes from the United States. So in terms of better reporting, we need language that's understood by all with the same terms used for the same things. Because if we don't have that, we can't replicate, which is a cornerstone of building knowledge. We can't implement those interventions that have been found to be effective. And it's very difficult to evaluate and therefore improve interventions. We have had reporting guidelines and tools which have been incredibly helpful and things have moved on. So we have uh, the Equator suite of uh, reporting guidelines, including consort for reporting of trials. We have um, checklists such as Tidia, template for intervention description and replication. 
we have the Cochrane collaborations, uh, PICO on ontology, um, population interventions, comparison outcomes. And then we have um, a taxonomy of specific behavior change techniques that are used within complex interventions, uh, published by myself and um, colleagues. Looking at the behavior change techniques, um, what are these? They aim to be the smallest components that on their own can bring about change. But I should stress, they have the potential to be the active ingredients of an intervention and not necessarily are. They're observable and replicable and they can be used alone or in combination. And the um, original paper uh, was published back in 2013. <clears throat> The taxonomy has 93 items and it's been grouped, uh, put into 16 groups by a particular suite of work. Um, and just to illustrate it, uh, on the top left hand corner, we have the first grouping called goals and planning. So you can see there, there are nine separate behavior change techniques. And I will just show you um, the definition and examples of the very first technique there, 1.1 goal setting where the goal is a behavior rather than outcome of behavior. And this is it. Set or agree on a goal, define in terms of the behavior to be achieved. And we note the ones that are similar but are different to help people distinguish and we give examples. Now this was developed in 2013, um, long before I'd heard of ontology. So these definitions will be updated uh, to bring it into line with um, ontologically acceptable definitions. Um, however, that's behavior change techniques, but we need to identify all components of interventions to answer uh, the big question that I presented before. So what components? Um, we have the intervention content where we're using behavior change techniques to specify those, but we also have how that intervention was delivered, the source, who delivered it, the schedule, how often the regularity of it, um, the style of uh, delivery, if it's from a person, what sort of personal style and the mode of delivery. Is it by um, paper? Is it by uh, social media? Is it by a human being directly, for example? Then secondly, we have the exposure to the intervention. This is crucial to understanding its effectiveness. And this is not only reach, but also the extent to which people um, that the intervention did reach actually engaged with that intervention. Then we have mechanisms of action, the processes by which the intervention had its effect, and the context of that intervention, the target population, the setting in which the intervention was delivered, and finally, the target behavior itself. So all of these need to be defined if we are to understand uh, the impact of interventions. So, I mentioned before about the importance of better reporting. I now want to move on to improving methods to organize and synthesize large amounts of complex evidence at scale and rapidly using automation and methods to make inference, but inferences from the evidence uh, that we have to generate new understandings. So automating knowledge accumulation. Um, we want to identify components um, allowing us to define interventions and their context in a way that is machine readable. This will enable extraction and synthesis of information from the world literature that's not possible by hand. And as I've said before, computation can generate new evidence and insights based on up-to-date research finding and inferences from what we do know to what we don't. And this is where the Human Behaviour Change Project comes in, which is a welcome funded um, large collaboration uh, between several universities and IBM research. Here are the um, three main teams, the behavioral science team, the computer science team, and the system architecture team. Uh, the grant holders are the top row, uh, the researchers on the second row. And then importantly, we have uh, consultants, including our ontology consultant, uh, Dr. Jana Hastings, and I don't know what we'd have done without her input. Just reminding you of this question, and that is the vision of the project, to be able to uh, allow people to address these questions, being able to draw on the world literature that's up to date. So 
Just in schematic terms, here's our problem. Messy evidence growing faster than humans can keep up with. This is what we want to turn it into, well-organized, useful scientific insights. So up-to-date estimates of the effectiveness of behavior change interventions, unpacking reasons for heterogeneity in intervention effectiveness, and generating new testable hypotheses about behavior change. The third is of particular interest to me as a um, behavioral scientist. What does the uh, Human Behavior Change Project does? Well, it's using artificial intelligence, uh, including natural language processing and machine learning, and it's generating an ontology to provide the organizing structure uh, to guide these processes. So the project uh, will and is creating and evaluating a behavior change intervention knowledge system. The knowledge system consists of an ontology of behavior change interventions and of its evaluation reports, importantly, a largely automated feature extraction system to read those um, evaluation reports, a behavior change intervention database containing the information from the evaluation reports structured according to the ontology, reasoning and machine learning algorithms to synthesize this information in response to user queries. And finally, an interface for both computers and human users to interact with the system. So that's the big picture. In terms of ontologies, their potential contribution to behavioral and social sciences is improving our clarity of thinking and reporting. And we have found it to be absolutely invaluable in that way generating new ideas and testable hypotheses, identifying information gaps and promoting lateral thinking, facilitating interoperability across domains of knowledge and knowledge representations, and providing a powerful and intuitive basis for automated querying and reasoning. So this is what the upper level of the behavior change intervention ontology looks like. If you look at the bottom row, bottom left-hand corner, you'll see the intervention, uh, defined by its content and delivery, working through various mechanisms of action to hopefully change the outcome behavior. And these uh, causal relationships are moderated by exposure, uh, the extent to which the intervention has reached its target population and the extent to which the target population <clears throat> engaged with the intervention. Um, also, the relationships are moderated by the context, the population setting. And one needs to consider all of these things together in relation to the outcome behavior value in order to um, understand what we're calling a scenario, a behavior change intervention scenario. And this could be an inter experimental intervention and it could also be a control intervention. And when we want to look at effectiveness, we want to compare those two. So we want to look, uh, compare two scenarios or more scenarios, depending on how many arms in a trial there is, there are. Um, uh, but this is the way, this is a schematic um, of how we would uh, represent each of those um, interventions. So um, for each of those, if I go back, for each of these entities that I've just uh, outlined here, um, we have an ontology underpinning each one. Uh, so I've already shown you behavior change techniques. Uh, we have published a, an upper level of the ontology. And we also so far have um, published separate ontologies for the mode of delivery, intervention setting, and also on our ontology development methods, uh, which I think are fairly innovative because I think we're the first, um, to our knowledge, of doing anything at this scale uh, within the social and behavioral sciences. And I should say, um, there is some resistance to this approach. Uh, under development, we have um, the source, schedule and style of delivery, the exposure, mechanisms of action, target behavior and target population. And um, those of you who are interested can follow this up um, in our open access publications. We have a collection within Welcome Open Research, uh, where we're publishing all of our material in relation to the project. Here we have um, the uh, behavior change intervention scenario that I uh, showed the kind of causal relationships uh, within the triangle just a couple of slides ago. And here we have, have it um, outlined with the 
um, relationships between the individual entities um, spelt out. And in the um, filled uh, circles at the top, you'll see we have both the plan of the scenario, i.e. what the uh, researchers or the intervention delivers plan to do, and then the report of what actually happened. And the difference between those two is often called uh, fidelity, the extent to which a protocol or a plan was delivered in practice. In order to understand effectiveness, we need to understand the difference between different scenarios where we vary different aspects uh, of those scenarios. So it's absolutely key also to develop a, an ontology of um, the comparison between these scenarios. So in red here on the left, uh, we have the um, where we've got to so far in terms of uh, defining the ontology for evaluation. And again, in the um, filled in red circles, you'll see we both have the study plan, but also what actually happened. Again, not always a one-to-one -one relationship between the plan and the reality. So how are we using ontologies uh, in the project? Uh, we're using them to annotate intervention reports, building the knowledge base for the project, and for the knowledge system. We're uh, using them to facilitate algorithms, performing reasoning inference about the evidence on the effectiveness of interventions. We're also going to use it to help users frame questions to ask of the knowledge system. Uh, for example, the ontology may serve to structure drop-down menu options in the query interface. So um, I'm just going to show you a schematic of the knowledge system. Here it is. So um, on the left, you see evaluation reports. These are the published study reports. They inform the um, behavior change intervention annotate, annotations that in turn are informed and informed the development of the um, behavior change intervention ontology. Um, then going down the screen from the annotations, they inform the database. And on the bottom left hand corner, corner you'll see the synthesis and interpretation. Um, the green boxes are those that use artificial intelligence and machine learning. And this is a two way interaction uh, between the synthesis and interpretation and the database itself. And then on the right hand side, you have the interface. Again, the two way uh, process. So um, the users query the knowledge system, but in turn, they can also feed into the knowledge system. So building the knowledge system using machine learning. This is uh, finding optimal connections and weights to classify outputs from input data and reasoning algorithms, which are using entity relationships and axioms to infer new entity relationships. So we are planning to deliver an end-to-end -end system in the first instance uh, for smoking cessation. And for that, we have a regularly updated database of more than 230 million study reports. Um, to extract entity, entities um, appearing in the ontology from study reports via natural language processing, training the entity extraction algorithms and the learnings initially via the human annotation of literature. So we have a big team of behavioral scientists uh, annotating hundreds and hundreds of um, reports. Then analyzing the information at scale using prediction algorithms from vector space to produce knowledge of likely effectiveness of behavior change interventions, providing an interface for users to pose questions and receive answers. And finally, as I said, integrate end user feedback to further train the knowledge system. Uh, we very much um, encourage engagement and collaboration uh, with the project. So we have a wonderful scientific advisory board, which is very international and very interdisciplinary. We have expert in, input, for example, um, invaluable input into um, reviewing our ontologies as we develop them. Um, we have panels of users and stakeholders uh, who are putting input into our development of our evaluation methods and uh, in due course developing the user interface. 
And then we have um, collaborators, a growing list of collaborators. Uh, we're collaborating with the Cochrane Collaboration uh, to look at how um, this ontology uh, can and, and our other processes can be helpful in their um, very important evidence synthesis work. We're collaborating with the Society for the Study of Addiction, who are, fu who are funding a, a parallel um, development of an ontology of addiction and also one of uh, e-cigarettes. And then we also have a new collaboration uh, called COVID Map, which is using uh, some of the techniques that we've developed in our project to um, get, establish a really up-to-date and extensive um, map of uh, the emerging COVID literature. All of our publications are uh, open access. I mentioned the um, current group on the Welcome Open Research. And um, as we're developing um, useful things that uh, other researchers, other users um, might be able to use, we're uh, putting them on, on GitHub. So I hope that's given you a sense of what this project is trying to do and how we're trying to do it. And I also hope we've got time for questions because I'd uh, love to hear your thoughts on what I've pre pre presented. Thank you very much.